Well, hello, you beautiful peeps. My name is John. Welcome to my channel. This is part three of the Dual Motor Dual ESC transformation on the Laralo AK787. As you can see, I've just plopped this into place. Nothing is attached because I obviously need to work you through what has happened. I've tried to clear the chassis up as much as I can, but this will just will not come off. And I need to update you on these things here. To get the old spur gear off was super simple, super simple. As I said I was going to do, I heated it up on our oven or cooker top. Uh, just burns off all of the thread lock. Make sure you do all four screws undone straight away because if you wait for it to cool down, it could potentially then just stick again. However, doing it the opposite way, when I tried to put the uh, metal part here, the silver part over, or the spur over the silver part, it wouldn't fit. It was like the hole is just slightly too small. So I heated up the, the gold part and cooled down the silver part in the hope that that would work and it didn't. So in the end, I had to use the bench press to push it all together and it actually worked out quite easily. So just keep that in mind. So that is the old one. This is the new one. Again, back to this one. This is the one that goes here into the center drive shaft. I did burn off the thread lock there as well, just to make it easier to put it back into position. Now, to make sure that I can do this as quickly as possible, I'm not going to be putting thread lock on various places. I'll go back afterwards and do that. So we have, this is the old pinion. Again, I just burnt off the thread lock. That's if I need to use that in the future. So I just put these here because I have to keep in mind that we need space for the two batteries that will essentially go like this, uh, but they shouldn't get in the way. Um, I've done nothing to the front, I've done nothing to the servo or anything, and it has just been taken off and it needs to obviously be put into position. And as far as the gyro is concerned, I'm actually gonna put that on a separate video or else this video is just gonna be way too long. So uh, concerning the motors and the ESC, you can see how I've mounted them. I've done it with the wires just slightly tilted out. You can do it with it slightly tilted in if you wish. Don't go too far because you've got the center tray there. And if you go too far at the side here, you won't get your battery in. So keep that in mind. Uh, there is a little wire here that has to go in to the back of your brushless motor. You can see that one's already in there. So I need to remember to do that. I have just used a couple of cable ties. They're not, they're not sort of holding properly. It's just to sort of pull everything together so I know roughly where things need to go. Uh, concerning the actual plugging them in, you see C is red, B is yellow, and A is black. We have to put this one on. And as you can see, there is a groove taken out of that. That's where the screw has to go into. So if I turn that to me, I should be able to see that. I may, you see what I did then? I didn't pull the shaft out. So I think I may just push it in a little bit more. It doesn't have to be all the way in, I don't think, but we will find out together, having not done this process before. I'm learning as I go along. As you can see, the receiver from the last time, I've just unplugged it and then I cut the two cable ties to be able to take the top deck off. So that's that, nice and perfect. So uh, concerning uh, the screws here, the thread lock I have not done on the motors here as yet. And concerning these here, on the AK917, they kept on sliding, which was very annoying. So in the end, I had to sand the the basically across like that a little bit so that the bolt, the top of the bolt had some purchase, which is fine. So, but for now, let's just get this into position. No, we must put the bearings back in, not forget the bearings. So that's the bigger one first, and then the smaller one there. like so. Now I need four screws. So these are the four screws that I was going to use. I did actually just fit them with the larger screws, but they did not fit. So make sure you don't use the larger ones, use the smaller ones for this. Sorry if that was a very unclean break on the video, but it's better that I don't waste your time. Excellent. 
So I will just make sure that that small bearing is still in position down here because it can fall out. So keep that in mind. This now needs to go into position. Again, it's the same uh, system as before. Just make sure that you get the edge there that that goes in, but I'm gonna have to have it facing upwards. Nice. Nice, 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 very good indeed. Okay, so starting to see roughly how all of this is going to work. There's not gonna be a lot of space, I'll be honest with you. Our opinion gears that need to go on. Again, on the motor, you just need to find where the small gash is taken out and try your best to line it all up. Ooh. That's not a lot of space to see. I'm just trying to line it up with the center of that as well, so. That's good. And this one has to rotate around. Same procedure as before. And then obviously you've got the putting it into position. All fine adjustments like this I'll do off camera after I've done the um, the actual uh, thread locking. Because if I do it all now, it's just pretty much a waste of time. But for those that haven't done it before, get a piece of paper. This is a little bit too thick for this. So make sure it's a piece of just A4 paper or something like that. You just put so if I move that out of the way, you put that there. Don't push it in too hard, but then tighten it up. And then when you bring it out, it's a bit corrugated like so. So you would do that sort of on both sides. Like so. And you see that's not very well corrugated, so I would have to set that properly. So there's that into position. Before I move on, I am just gonna put this little connector in all the way down. Like so, excellent. Okay, 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 okay. So the steering system, I don't think that can be done yet. This is where the gouge is taken out and that's where that would go. I think it's that way, it could be that way. We'll, we'll check that in a minute. But this one for sure has to go on like so. If you see like that because then this arm would be facing downwards and underneath. Let's undo that while we're here. Gonna come off? No. You're just gonna get the two little screws at the sides as well. I thought I did them enough, but obviously not. They're undone. Come on, there we go. The bolt that came out, I'm gonna put back in. Perfect. So let me find a screw that fits. We know that this fits because it's how we took it off. Remember what I said about keeping the bolts together. You'll be thankful of that when it's the case of putting all this back together. So that will be like that, which means that this one, excellent, and then you can see how that fits. So we do have the two original screws. Again, I will take those out. We're not gonna need that spacer, I do not think. It's the second two holes here, so. Make sure I don't catch any of the wires. See if our 
put it the right way around or not. Let's see what's caught there. Nothing. Nice. There we go. It's going to sit like that, is it? Maybe like that. That would be better. Uh, I'm not putting the top deck in yet because obviously we need to uh, put the center drive shaft in. I just want to sort of see how all of this is going to fit together. Like that. We had the question mark over why we had two of these. So one of them is obviously going to go downwards. So all adjustments can be made afterwards. Oops. So the arms are actually identical. So I believe, let me just put them side by side. Yes. Good. And then the arm would go like that cross because this arm is shorter you see that's why they've sent the, the second arm but if it goes on the ball joint there and then it would go on the ball joint that we're going to swap over there so what's this arm for okay we'll do the rest afterwards that can go out the way for now that then goes like that, that goes like that, and that like that. So take the two screws off that you have kept. Just put one finger on it to hold it in position. That doesn't look like it's fitting very well. I've done it the wrong way around. So we'll just ignore that, and we'll do it like that. So just to be clear, there's the jello one. It goes that way, and that enables it to light up with the two holes that are there. Very good, very good. Just checking to see if there's loads that I've forgotten, and there definitely will be. Uh, this one, the ball joint, let me just pull that off, it needs to come off because we obviously need that. I wonder why we can't use this one on the uh, compared to the original servo. Ah, okay, because it's longer, that's why. Because you don't just mount it in that hole. Mm, it's off by a little bit. Okay, I see what they're doing. I put that ball joint on the wrong way, so in an effort to save you time, and to stop you watching my video in the wrong order, it goes on the rear like so. Again, in the lower one, or which would now be the upper one, but it would be in that one there. Excellent. The arm goes down here on the steering like so. Ow. Nice. And then it goes obviously on the ball joint. Just want to check that everything sort of lines up. Excellent. So concerning fixing the servo onto the two mounts, if you did as I suggested, you'll still have the original screws. So just do it that way. Some time later. Ah, bit of a problem on this one, ladies and gents. Uh, you can see how this one is sitting flush where this one is not. See how the screws aren't going all the way in. If you look on that mount, there's actually an exit for the screws to come out. There's not on that one. So these screws are too long. Let me see if we can find some shorter ones in the pack. I do have these here. So I'll just attempt using, I know that they're not the correct head, but better than nothing just now. I need to find a small one for there. Let's see if this one works. 
The reason being that there's no exit for the bolt thread on the lower section. Yeah, that works. Four bolts. One, two, three, four to go back in. Again, I'm not going to put all the, these all the way in because I'm going to literally take them out in a few seconds time, but you get the idea. Nice, nice, nice. I'm just going to take the servo one out because I want to make sure that I don't break the servo. So I'm just going to pop off that head just, just for a second when I turn it all on. So this is the receiver. Obviously that will have to be fit somewhere, but channel one should be steering. So let's put that in channel one. And then for the ESC, I'll do it up and through and up and through just for now so it's easier for you guys to see this obviously came with the pack so it's not the yellow one there so it would be white to white and then again oops white to white there and then that will go into the receiver channel two which is there so i'm just going to make sure that we've got no nothing on the movable parts uh, plug it in move that out of the way get the power cable or the on button out of the way I'll do that this side, out of the way, nothing touching for the minute. Obviously I haven't set the gaps here properly, so I'm gonna be ultra careful, ultra, ultra. So turn it on, uh, just go to the steering and set that to the center, which I believe is the top one there. So turn them both on, there's a power button. Excellent, right, steering. I will now line up the wheels. It's a bit loud now, but the steering is now reversed. So on channel one, just adjust that and now we'll turn left and right. Oh. Very good. And you saw it just run, but I'll be very, let me turn that right down. I'm gonna turn it right down. How cool is that? Power off. Oh, silence is goddamn. Yes, yes. Took me off for a few seconds. So, ladies and gents, as you can see, it wasn't really that hard, was it? Let's be honest. I do have to get the sticky pads for this, and then I'm thinking about if the receiver goes, say, there, I could have the two power buttons there or something like that. Um, we don't have the fan like we had on the AK-917, so, you know, that can go pretty much anywhere along there. Yeah, because it sort of slopes down near the end there, which is absolutely fine. But I have to say, it's not really the hardest thing to do. I did expect it to be a little bit more difficult, but it hasn't taken that long a time either, which is a bit of a surprise. So let me go and buy the tape and tidy all of this up and obviously do all the thread locking and everything. And I'll see you in a minute. 
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Well, as you can see, I have finally finished. It's not the best of uh, <laughs> jobs tidying everything up, but it's as good as I could do. Uh, the recording that I'm showing you somewhere on the screen now uh, was to show you how long it took, because some people think that it takes me eight hours to do the, you know, the rest of the project and whatnot. That was not the case. It took just over 40 minutes, I believe. Apologies for the shaking hands and whatnot. I don't usually record in the evenings because I get shaky in the evenings because of the medication and everything that I'm on. Uh, but I just had to get it done last night. Now, everything is done. I've checked to make sure that... Oh, no. Please hold. <laughs> Welcome back. I was about to say, I've checked to make sure that everything is set, but the last thing I did last night that I was supposed to do this morning was to just verify that this motor was in position, and it was not. So I've just quickly done that. Um, and I hope that we're not going to have any cogging issues. So, as I said, everything is in position. There's nothing here really to point out because it was as easy as what we thought it was going to be. So, both batteries plugged in. It's going to get a bit noisy, obviously, with the two fans, but let's turn it on. So, steering. Very cool. And acceleration. I love that. I do love that. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That is it all completed now. Uh, I have thread locked the things that I think need thread locking as well. So I hope that we are sorted for its first run. Um, I'm going to do the first test and the run outside on the main channel, John Robinson RC. I will link here for you and then we'll see how we get on but i don't anticipate any issues one other thing just before we go uh, the battery uh, spate or stoppers that were on well, we've got four of them one two three four here just go on with the two screws that i talked about that uh way back so just make sure you put those in as well that stops the battery sliding back and forth is that it that's it perfect and I think you can agree that it does look pretty good in there. They've done a good job of packaging everything, which is impressive. So thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Stay safe, take care. Bye-bye.